So please come in so we can start the second section. So good morning everyone. My name is Lan Le from Hanoi University of Science and Technology. So I'm very happy to be chair of this section. So uh, in this section, I would like to introduce uh, Professor Ching Chung Huang, right? From uh, Taiwan University and uh, with the uh, talk uh, entitled From Supervised Learning to Just for Learning, Applications and Theory. And uh, first of all, I would like to give some information of our keynote speaker. So Professor Ching Chung Huang uh, graduated from uh, National Chao Tung University in Taiwan in 2010. And now he is uh, associate professor uh, with the Department of Electrical Engineering, National Chung Chang University in Taiwan. And uh, at the same time, he is leading lab of uh, applied computing and multimedia. So Professor Ching Chong Huang is working on uh, image and video processing, computer vision, machine learning, wireless sensor network. And he was also director of Division of International Students in CCU from 2016-2017. Uh, 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 and uh, Professor Ching Chong Huang has uh, led a lot of uh, international and national pro uh, projects. So actually, uh, his project was selected at Excellent Young Scholar Program. And uh, he received a, a lot of awards from National Electrical Engineering Society um, from uh, academic contributions. So he had published uh, 10 international journal papers, more than seven, uh, 27 international conference papers, and 12 buttons since 2011. So uh, we uh, are very happy, and thank you, Professor uh, Ching Chong Huang, for accepting being uh, giving a, a note uh, from, uh, for our uh, conference. So please. Hello, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you Chairman, uh, Professor Dai, and thank you uh, the MAPR committee and the professors, old friends. Give me this chance, give me this chance to uh, uh, share my personal experience in um, uh, machine learning. So the title today is From Supervised Learning to Transfer Learning. And uh, yeah, this is the, the university where I come from in Taiwan, National Zhongzhen University. And uh, the talk, in, in today's talk, uh, I would like to share my experience in uh, vision detection. And in order to uh, introduce what have I learned, uh, I was using the vacant parking space detection as an example and talking about in the past decade, uh, how could we, how, uh, how could we def define or design several algorithms from, by using the traditional classical pattern recognition methods. Uh, and right now we also using a, a new a deep learning method of a modern machine learning method to solve this problem. And later on we find in order to make this system become more real, we also need to target a transfer learning. So uh, ho uh, hopefully today I could uh, quickly report what I, what I have learned um, in this, in this uh, problem. So let's try to define this problem first. They can park in space detection. The, 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 I, the question is very simple. So you're using one camera, and in the outdoor, in the, in the outdoor you monitor a very big uh, parking lot. In this case, we have a 60 or 70 parking space in this, in this lot. And you're using one camera, design, you design an algorithm, then you try to know the status of each parking space. So this is a goal. Uh, we choose this, this topic is uh, not because this problem is simple, so we can publish the paper. So uh, we do this is because uh, this is outdoor video surveillance. So in the outdoor, usually it's more difficult to handle in terms of vi uh, uh, computer vision. You have lighting problem, you have shadow problem, such like this. Uh, besides, we, in order to um, make this system become more useful, this system should be uh, very high accurate. So the accurate rate may be higher, like, such like 99%, and the response time should also be high. And finally, recently we also target at the model generalization. That means we hope once we change the model, this model can quickly uh, uh, deploy to a different parking lot uh, quickly. So uh, we are talking about all of this challenge data. Um, here are some uh, vision challenges when we handle the um, outdoor, vi uh, outdoor video surveillance um, algorithms, try to design this kind of algorithms. So first one is the uh, perspective distortion. 
um, you may you may know uh, have this kind of sense say small ob uh, when object is far away from your camera the object is more small and have more severe distortion and object will be bigger if this object is more close to the camera so this perspective distortion um, occlusion is another big issue say um, suppose uh, you can see here there's a vacant space human can easily to do this but uh, when the objects are quite small and they all uh, get together at this time how the algorithm can do this uh, well or even uh, outperform uh, humans abilities is something we are interested in besides in the outdoor we also have a nighttime issue uh, lighting issue from the morning to the uh, evening the, the, the lighting is changed a lot we also have shadow effect and the different weather conditional effect uh, in order to build up a real system and get a 99% or even upper accuracy all of this problem should be uh, carefully uh, take care so in uh, 2007 uh, when I was staying in uh, CMU for um, two years uh, uh, visiting I we, we, we have a we write a first paper uh, in ICME and at that time we just based on very simple idea say could we use in the traditional pattern recognition method such like support vector machine and based on some feature uh, human design feature to solve this problem so we have the testing phase and we also have a uh, we have training phase we also have testing phase at a time 10 years more than 10 years ago we designed a feature by ourselves so uh, we get a, we get the images and crop the parking row and later on for each three space unit three space parking space we treat as a unit unit and then do the normalization so in the next slides we'll talk more detail about this and later on, at the time we don't have deep learning right so we need to design our feature so that the time our feature is we try to scan the intensity of this uh, parking row uh, so you get a distribution intensity distributions many uh, you, you get a distributions and later on for each distribution we also build up the ground models uh, the ground model here is the, the color information of the, the ground or the surface say and based on this ground model we are able to classify each pixels as a ground pixel or non-ground pixels so later on we treat this probability ground pixel or non-ground pixel as a feature fit it fit it fit those feature into the multi class support vector machine and get get a result so the idea is quite simple uh, you have you design your feature right now uh, go into the support vector machine and then you get a status of three parking space That's because every time we only input uh, three parking space as a unit and uh, later on, uh, we, we find this result is still not good so we have another post processing by using the macro random field so I was talking about this in next slide so for in the pre-processing part we crop the uh, parking row and then uh, select three space as a unit and they turn ship one space so, and then crop or select another three space as a unit one by one one by one so when we, when, when we do the inference we, we do it this way uh, by scanning the whole park, uh, the whole parking space every time we only look at three parking space um, this is the original images page we crop so in order to overcome the perspective distortion we need to do a simple um, normalization so you, you see the, the right now the image is become a rectangle so the the distortion problem can be um, uh, can be solved and every time why we, only, why we consider a crew why we consider three space is because we need to consider the uh, neighborhood information or the occlusion bet between different vehicles so by consider three space at the same time we are able to uh, understand the, uh, how how to handle occlusion problem and they don't fit it into we have a feature fit into the support vector machine for every three space unit we will get the status for example in this case 101 and then we put the right hand side get another three space fit into support vector machine you will get another status for this three space 000, zero, zero. but there are two space are overlap so uh, what happened is because you, was, you, you all know the support vector machine cannot always 100% do the right thing right so if the, up, if the status is not, is not consistent that means uh, this, this result say uh, this status is one another page say this one should be zero so how to handle this this kind of conflicts so at the time we uh, introduce Marco random field try to uh, smooth or uh, try to smooth and try to find out an optimized solution to find a balance between this kind of conflicts 
and uh, solve this problem. So this is the something we have in 2007. Uh, we have the, we have the idea using the probability could be could be treated as a feature, and at that time we also see the occlusion problem. Here we need to mention occlusion problem is because um, the image he, here we handle the objects are very small, the vehicle objects are very small, and they are get together together um, they are tightly tightly get together. So it's very difficult to detect every car or every space one by one. So this is our experience eh? in this case. Uh, later we also give you some experience. Eh? If you do it one by one, the result is usually not good. So in order to handle this occlusion problem, we treat the three space as a unit. And in the later publication, uh, this, kind of, this kind of definition, we always use it. And we all, this time, at, in this paper, we consider support vector machine and macro random field. And we also find this kind of discriminative method, usually the, the, pro the processing speed is very fast. That means your system can quickly give you the answer. But weakness of this work is the accuracy, accuracy rate is very low, only 92. Yeah, for this simple application, accuracy is very important. It should go up to 99 or even better. And also, the human design feature is not robust. There are still many things we do not consider. So we begin to think, is there any other useful information we can use, uh, not just based on the uh, machine learning tool, support vector machine. So in 2011, uh, we published one paper in IEEE transaction. We proposed a Bayesian hierarchical framework. So here you see the pi uh, Bayesian, right? So Bayesian means we have the prior and the likelihood. So the major contribution of this work is we try to leverage the thin prior. We think that, okay, this, this is, we have, ca we have camera, this parking lot never change. So we, we can try to build, build up the, the, the virtual 3D things of this parking lot. And for each vehicles, we try to use in a cubic, a cub cubatic model to represent one vehicles and try to know where is their location. Suppose we guessed or we generate a status hypothesis. We guess uh, there's a three vehicle parking here, two here, two here. Then, based on this um, uh, scene prior, we also, suppose we, we can also know the, the sunlight uh, directions. Then, we are able to synthesize the possible uh, expected scene uh, information. So this is something we, tr we would like to introduce or some extra information we like to bother. Uh, besides, we also have the uh, image observation, right? So we need to well use this. So in order to, uh, in order to combine all of this information at a time, we propose a, a, Bayes, a Bayesian or probability, probability, probability graphical model to model all this problem. Uh, you should know 10 years ago, probability graphical model is very hard, just like deep learning now. But right now, few, uh, fewer people are talking about this. Um, so in our model, we have three layers. Uh, in the thin layer, this thin layer, every node represents the status of the state of each parking space. So the status will be zero or one for each space. And in the middle layer or hidden layer, we have uh, we have so many nodes. Each node is the status of each pixel. This pixel belongs to ground pixel or car pixel, or this pixel is belong to shadow pixel or non shadow pixel. And finally, this observation there. So. Our feature is simply using the RGB intensity. And you can see it, we have some link, right? This link try to uh, model the relationship between the 3D scene. This is 3D scene and uh, the segmentation result. So this thing, uh, we, are also, we, we embedded this kind of scene prior into those connection. And for the uh, hidden layer to the uh, observation there, we also have some link. This link you can treat as a likelihood or a pixel-wise classifier. They try to say, I give it an intensity RGB, what's the likelihood of this pixel belong to um, a, a car pixel or ground pixel. So this one you can, you can train a, um, a distribution and do this kind of classif classification or some, based on some other uh, pattern recognition method. So uh, once we build up this graphical model, we have the images. We also will model the connection relationship between the hidden layer and the observation layer. Also the connection between the scene, scene node and the uh, hidden node. So we can do the optimization and find out the hidden layer, the segmentation result and the status when we do the inference. So it can become an optimization problem. So 
Um, in the mathematical part, maybe a little bit difficult to understand, but if we go to a more high level intuition, it looks like this. So we have the 3D scene and we begin to guess because we don't know the true status of each parking space, right? So now we begin to guess. Suppose we guess uh, there are three space here, two space here, two space here, and lighting is in this direction. Then we can synthesize the uh, expected object map, something that is say, okay, in the images, we know that the here should be the uh, car pixels, here should be the ground pixels, something like that. And we can also generate a shadow, so we can know where is the shadow, where is non-shadow, based on our status hypothesis. But here, you, you should remind that we don't know the true status, so you need to generate a lot of hypotheses. So for each hypothesis, you can generate one expecting, you, you can generate the expecting, expectation objective map and the segment shadow map. From the image side, you can do the pixel-wise class, uh, classification to classify the, the uh, object to classify the object not pixels or ground pixels or shadow pixel, non-shadow pixel. This time you do the simple comparison between your expectation and your observation. Right? You can get a segmentation from your data, you can get a expectation segmentation from your, your models, then you do the similarity measure them. If they, they are match, that means your, your hypothesis is right. If they don't match, now change another hypothesis. Okay? So this is the idea, but uh, of course, if in order to speed up, we, we, do, we do do some uh, programming, do some speed up, uh, uh, try to simplify the problem. But idea is, uh, but the novelty of this work is we introduce the 3D scene prior, model the shadow, model the uh, in, inter-vehicle occlusion, because you already have the 3D models. And uh, we, we introduce the Bayesian, Bayesian uh, framework, so we have the prior information plus the likelihood information. The, like, the weakness of this word is it takes too much time. You see, every time we need to, when we need to generate a hypothesis, you have so many space. Every space, every, every space have two status. You have too many hypotheses need to try. So it spends too much time. So um, the idea is good, but it's not useful for a real system. Besides, uh, here you can see uh, when we, from the images, we do the pixel-wise classification. Pixel-wise classification is usually not very robust and also have night tie issue. So in 2013, uh, we published another paper in uh, our transaction. This time we modify or improve our previous version from pixel-wise to pixel-wise based or uh, pixel-based or uh, to plane-based hierarchical frame. You can see still using the plane hierarchical frame work, but this time we only we consider the patch instead of consider the pixel. Besides, uh, in the previous work, um, we, need to, we need to generate a hypothesis for AV space, right? They will take too much time, generate too many status hypotheses. So right now, every time we only consider three space, because when you want to know the status of this space, you don't need to care about the status here, right? They, they, have some, they are independent. So every time we only consider three space, and right now each space, we use a, we use a cubic to model it, so for each cubic, you will have a six. You will have a six page. You can see you have a cubic, and you can decompose it, become a six page. So totally, uh, three three cubic. You have a sixteen page because some some of them page are shared. And for each page, for each page in the image, you will have a small area. This small area, you can you can try to extract the feature inside this page and uh, go to the classifier, and what we, that's what we call weak classifier, tell you the partial information of the status of this three space. So you can see every, every page, we will have a result. We get a feature and have a result of a label. Or here, the label is what we call the occlusion pattern in each page. And they tell, combine all of those pages. They are, every page are small, have small information. We try to combine fusion all of them in order to support give us the evidence to uh, support or to infer the final status of this three space. Uh, so this, this, this made the work better than the previous work uh, because uh, we're using the patch features. So it's more robust than pixel-wise feature. And besides, we, right now we combine many, many weeks, um, many, many weeks information. So the, the final information, final uh, result is also more robust. Finally, it's faster than previous work. 
Here are some more detail. Uh, every cubic, you can have six page. And uh, for each patch, after you project this patch into the images, you can you can crop the select the suitable patch. But this patch is this distort is distorted, so you also need to do the normalization, make it become a rectangle before you fit into your cage file. So right now, uh, all of these are very standard uh, procedure before you want to apply the pattern recognition method. So again, we can quickly see the concept of intuition. Uh, here, suppose this time uh, we also from the the same model, but every time right right now we only consider three space as a unit, and then we guessed their hypothesis, their status hypothesis. For example, give an example, say uh, there are three status, and uh, there are three space, and their status are zero one one. Once we have zero one one, you can generate the label for each page. This is the label for each page. Okay, and. Uh, from the image part, we can also select uh, a, select a page according to, for example, this three page. We can look at the, the image area here and know the patch location. Later on, for each small patch, we will go through the case file and get a uh, label result. Okay, this label result may not be may not be hundred percent correct, but when we do the matching, we match in all about totally six we case file with the um, cache, classification result from the uh, data, from the images. So by compare, com compare them, we can know this hypothesis is right or wrong. So the idea is same, also hierarchical framework, but using the patch information. So the overall system become more robust and also faster. So uh, overall system flow will look, look like this. Pre-processing part, we, we have m uh, many exposure images and try to fusion them uh, in, order to, in order to get uh, uh, enhanced images. So uh, therefore the nighttime issue can be, uh, can, uh, can be solved. And later on, we go to the uh, detection part. We select, uh, we select uh, the page uh, according to the, the current three space unit. And later on, for each small page, we go to the support vector machine and before we go to a support vector machine, each page we also need to extract a feature before we go, go to a case file. Long time ago, people doing this way. So at that time, we're using the HOG feature and also using LDA to reduce the dimension. They can support vector, go to the case file, get a label. And from the uh, 3D models, we also generate the status hypothesis. They can, we do the comparison, major similarities try to understand this high status is right or wrong. Every time, we only determine the status of three space and data move to the, the, other, the other step. So then we get a result. So uh, conclusion of this matter is the prime best matter is more robust. Prime, uh, we have the prime, the prime best feature is more robust and we also have a small, sm smaller college fire. By fusion those smaller, uh, small weak college fire, the result is better. And the nighttime issue can be uh, can be using pre-processing way to solve it. And uh, something I want to mention is the in every in every page, what we want to learn, we find the page the the feature we learn is occlusion pattern. So as I mentioned, because right now object is very small, so if you, if you try to learn what is equal or what is a space, very it's very difficult because. For the ground space, right now it's occurred by the vehicles. But, but if you want to learn, detect the vehicles, the, the pixel, are, uh, the, the size, the solution of, of the vehicle are so small. So very difficult to design a very robust vehicle detection in this kind of situation, parking lot space detection. So we find in this world, the pattern we learn is the occlusion pattern. When the, okay, when several vehicles parking together side by side, they will form a very spatial occlusion pattern. And that kind of occlusion pattern is the key information we use to infer the, the status. Okay, so uh, there's something when we look into the, uh, we try to understand what kind of feature we learn. But the weakness is the time is still consuming. Uh, in this version, uh, we, we can get a re one result roughly maybe 10 seconds. It's still too slow, uh, and at the time we think maybe it's because this kind of generated framework. Every time we need to, we need to generate a lot of hypothesis, so it takes some times. Besides, 
When we fusion multiple weak classifiers, we treat, we give the, every classifier an equal weight. So, but different page are located in different, different, uh, different location, right? And different small page, their confidence, their, the information, the confidence of this page is different. If you fusion them, if you fusion them by in the same way, maybe uh, the final uh, result is not perfect. So we, we try to think about is that possible, uh, try to evaluate the importance of each space, of, of each page, and also think about try to improve the, the speed. And in this work, we also, uh, when we do this kind of sweet space, sweet space unit, and then to move to the new one, we always have the conflict problem, but in this work, we don't mention about it. So in 2016, another algebra transaction, we, we talk about uh, uh, how to speed up. So in this version, based on our experience, it seems that discriminate, discriminate, discriminated method is always faster than uh, Bayesian method or generative methods. Uh, of course, right now we have GAN, so a little bit different. But I mean the traditional generative framework. So uh, in this new framework, uh, we modify our framework become something like this. The, uh, the, we have four layer, image layer, patch layer, space layer, and the lot layer. So in the image layer to patch layer, we also do the same things. Every time we only look at three space, three space as a unit, and later we have so many page. For each page, we using the HOG as a feature and do the support vector machine, get a result. But once we get a result, we begin to change the weight of each, but the change the confidence or the weight for each page by using the uh, uh, data-driven methods. So data, we based on the way to uh, fusion them, we based on the way to fusion those uh, weak classifiers uh, in the between of patch layer to space layer. Finally, in the last layer, uh, we have, for in the space layer, we have many uh, in, in inference result of three space, right? But what we want is a whole parking space. So we try to use in the Marco random field again, try to uh, uh, get a final, uh, status of the whole parking lot, okay? So un until this version, 2006, uh, you, you can look at the structure have very similar to neural network already. Uh, the difference is, is every layer we decide one by, by ourselves, so we give a cl very clear definition and what we should do for each layer. So we try to understand or try to define everything uh, by ourselves, but they have this kind of sense. Uh, in the image layer, we use in the very low layer feature HOG and data. In the patch layer, we treat the occlusion pattern as the middle level feature, and data. Every we come, we try to fusion, uh, weighted fusion of multiple uh, information from different page, and become a, a high level feature. Here, high level feature is uh, the status of sweet space, and data. We try, uh, we try to refine it by using Markov random field. So uh, in 2006, uh, at that time, uh, this framework very fast. Uh, every every uh, second, we can have a three. Uh, we can roughly have two to three friend result. It's good enough for a parking lot application, and uh, the performance if accuracy is very high. Already go to 99 something uh, in different weather condition. In the raining, raining day, sunny day, partial cloudy day, the accuracy already go from uh, original 22 now 99. Uh, yeah, and uh, something in this framework is every layer, we, are, we try to define it by ourselves so we understand what happened in each layer. So uh, in 2006, we think maybe uh, parking lot, this, we, we should change another research topic. Uh, don't focus on this anymore, right? But uh, someday we, we find, uh, because usually we need to do a demonstration and try to test the, the, the performance of this system. Um, even the Microsoft or to also visit our lab to see this, uh, to see this, 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 uh, this demo. But someday the system goes wrong. Uh, later on, we, we pay some attention to check what happened. We find the layout of parking lot of, the, of this parking lot, this, uh, this uh, test platform, this, this test bed, it changed. Then we lay out the parking space, make, it sp make, make a space smaller. But at that time, we don't know because we just run the system every day. After we double check it, we find not Algorithm do not have, have problem, but once the the size of each parking space becomes smaller, the performance reduces. So that means they give a sense say why our algorithms performance are very good, but only for 
the original original uh, original uh, test bed. Once the test bed change a little bit, this system, this model become very sensitive. So uh, we try to understand the problem. We find when the the size of the space is small, the occlusion become more severe. But when the size is bigger, uh, for a small car, they have a displacement problem. Displacement, pro dis displacement problem such that this, there's a small car, small car here. It's, he parked on the, maybe on the, the hand side, so there are some space, extra space. For, for people, may, sometimes they may um, misunderstand, maybe say um, this here is a some, big, some space here, but it's not big enough. So, uh, we think about the generalization of the classification model or machine learning model should, is an important issue. So, once I give you a, a, a model, we will suppose this model can, can work for everything, but unfortunately right now, machine learning, even deep learning methods still have this kind of weakness. They, they are not general enough. For every case, you need to design it or personal or a specific design for every case. So we begin to think about how to solve this problem. Uh, and uh, even for something I say, uh, even for the same, same parking lot, if the parking space change a little bit, we also hope, we don't, if, we need, if we need to do a retraining, we also hope the effort is, re is uh, small. And the better thing is, once we have model, it's better that we can transfer or uh, deploy those models to other parking space more and quickly. So in 2018, we published another work. Uh, uh, this one, this time we, we, this work is totally based on the uh, deep, learning, uh, deep learning method, deep CNN, uh, but with, with some uh, modification. Uh, we also introduced the contrasting network and spatial transfer network, combine them together, become this uh, uh, deep learning framework. And this is a, a, a network, totally end-to-end -to -end training, and uh, the model generation is increased. Right now, this version, uh, the hum the, we don't using any human design features. Everything is done by the from the data. But the challenge is, in order to get, get a very robust uh, models, we use more than one million training samples. Uh, and the framework, so it don't, uh, before DNN, we, the research focused on feature design. But now, uh, we need to focus on network design. So in this framework, we have a three part, the spatial transfer learning, uh, contrastive uh, feature extraction network, and also final in, uh, inference layers. We'll talk it one by one. So the STN, uh, this is a network, uh, have ability to, according to your input page, then they are, they, uh, they are able to find out output the geometric parameters tell you how to do the warping or do a transformation of your input input page. Here again is also three space unit. Okay, so so we try to crop a, a small page. And this network will according the content tell you the parameters. In our in our examples, we output the parameters of A5 transform and then based on this A5 transform to warp your input page become another form. So it, it works like a normalization, but not a, uh, not a, how to say, not, a, the, not always the same one. It's adaptive to uh, what kind of cost function you design. Uh, maybe I would directly uh, give you some examples. You can see maybe here. Uh, this is final one is our design framework. We, we, this, when you design framework, when work, you need to introduce some loss function, right? And here we also try to design the other two deep learning methods. Uh, it's more like a traditional CNN uh, with, with STM. And you, you can see, according to different network, the STM will warp the same input page into a different, uh, in, into a, warp into a different form. So you see every page, they will, they will gener every page they will generate parameters, then warp it, and this, this, uh, this page will be better uh, have a better view for uh, later classification. So if we uh, do the STN combined with CNN, uh, this one only focus on me the middle one. Therefore, the loss function also for only focus on middle one. Therefore, the STN try to crop the middle area only. And this one try to focus on here you see STN A, right? A means the uh, uh, A status of three space. So they try to cover 
uh, keep the whole sweet space information. But our meters in the between, so it's not as smaller as the middle one, but uh, it'll be bigger. So this is the function of STM. After you have the STM, the algorithm will automatically warp your, your page or uh, normalize, do something for your input. And then this input page is better for later classification. After you have the warping normalization, then we do the feature extraction, so you go to CNN. Uh, but if you directly go, go to a CNN, the feature you, you have is something you may not know. So here we introduce what we call a contrasted, contrasted um, network. So you can see we have two branches. Every time when we train this network, we always input a pair of three space unit. So if the lay, uh, this is supervised learning, right? So we know the label of this three, of this this page. If this is one one one, this is one one zero. Their label is different. So we will hope their feature after your CNN, the feature you, you trade are different. Their their feature difference are their features uh, distance should be far away from each other. But if their label are same. Here is one one one. Another page is also one one one. Even for the left hand side, the color is red. The car is red colors. The right hand side, the the car have the white colors. But their status are same. So we will force your CNN try to learn the similar feature. You the feature you learn should be uh, get uh, should be close to each other. So this kind of information very helpful. Help you to learn some some feature that is uh, independent or is not sensitive to the color or lighting or shadow. Okay, so they will try to find out the uh, fundamental uh, features that, um, how to say, they cluster the uh, feature into, in this case, A groups, because totally you have A status, right? One, 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 zero, zero, zero. So totally A states. So the state, the feature right now, distribution you have should belong to A independent groups. So here are some uh, more formal SMS definition. Um, uh, this is the laws we have. The idea is you get a feature if their label are same, their feature distance should be close. If their label label are different, then uh, feature. If their label are different, try to have a feature separate them in a different space in a different location. So maybe we look at the distribution. It's more clear. So uh, try to uh, in order to understand or, or verify our feature is more meaningful. We try to visualize their distributions, and you can see the left hand side two distribution. Here is the the, dis the feature distribution of three space unit based on our matter, and right hand side two two other neural network or deep learning matter. There, uh, this is di this is the distribution extracted by uh, those matters, and our matters uh, here you can see the uh, you can see very clearly a groups, every group corresponding to the status zero 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 one something like that. Beside that, you can also see, you can also easily to find a hyperplane or a decision boundary to separate the feature into two groups. And uh, if you look at the left hand side group, uh, this is maybe uh, green, orange and the red one, orange red one. If you look at them, uh, the middle, the middle space is always zero. That means uh, this part, the the middle space, their status are zero and. Uh, Right hand side, their middle labels, middle, middle space, their status are one. So if you have this kind of feature, have very good feature separate with each other, next, when you do the status inference, you don't need to have very complicated framework anymore. You just need to build up a, maybe such like our case, two class logic regression, even don't use in a support vector machine, or you can use in a linear support, ve linear support ve vector machine, very simple version, that you can get a result. So let me review again. Every time uh, when we do a training, we training, we give a, a pair of training data. Every every data is covered three space, and this child uh, network training not only help our to get a more robust feature, but also increase the training numbers. Because right now, originally we have one million data. Right now, you can select and select any two page as a new date new training data. So that means you can create more data for, um, for training your uh, network, make it become more uh, stable. This is uh, our uh, data set. Um, 
Besides using the original parking lot, we also try to test in the other parking lot to make sure our network is more general enough. And uh, compared with the previous version we mentioned, right now this version have the highest performance. And uh, compared with the, some other very famous object detection deep learning methods such like FAST or CNN, uh, their performance is, is have some performance. They can detect some space, some vehicles, but performance is not good because uh, they are not special designed for this application. Uh, here, this, this, if you just want to say, if you simply apply the object detection algorithms to this problem, the performance may not be good because here when we say, because this problem is not very difficult, so we want it to become very useful. So the accuracy should be higher than 97, 99, suppose like that. And compared with other neural network methods, uh, we designed several versions. But we find if you, don't, if you just simply treat a deep learning as a black box, you can have a, some performance, but only go to 96, 97, something like that. But if you design it way out, your performance can go to 99, 99.6. And this is the, the other data set. And uh, don't forget, we also have the parking space size problem. So right now, we're using these new meters in different size. Uh, for, for, the, for the case of different space size, the performance right now are quite robust compared with uh, the traditional methods. So this, this is something that we want to prove that um, by this kind of data-driven method, the, the, al the algorithm of the model will become more uh, general and become more robust. Okay, so we also have a real-time demo in our website. If you are interested, you can go there to visit the performance. Now, the, find the another problem is, yeah, right now the model is become robust for one for the same parking lot. But how about if we want to deploy this, uh, this system from one parking lot to the other parking lot? So sometimes we, we, we always hope our research can become a real system, right? So when you deploy it to the other parking lot, you, if you do everything, then that means you need to collect another medium data and then waiting for a lot, a lot of time. Therefore, we begin to thinking about is that possible using some unsupervised um, way to help us quickly deploy the system. Then we go to the transfer learning. So the idea of transfer learning is like this. You have a one, one model in the what we call source domain and the other, the, the other, model, uh, the other model we want to change in the target domain. And in the source domain, uh, we already have a classifier. So how about this? We do the domain adaptation. We, ha we know the distribution of, every, of the target distribution, right? And also the distribution of the source. If we do the adaptation, adaptation means we try, to align the, we try to align the distribution of the target distribution and the source distribution make it match together. Once they're their distribution are matched together in high level space, in high, in a feature space, then we can simply apply the classifier we change in the source domain, apply it to the target domain. So that's the basic idea of the domain adaptation or transfer learning. So you have idea, so now you can design a network. Once you have idea, right now, very simple. Uh, you can design, uh, 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 you have many tools to design uh, DNA mailers. So you, you, you design your feature, your, your feature extraction network, get a feature space, not only one sample, you have a lot of sample, and then in the feature space, you get a distribution. So think about you have, if you're using the uh, digit data set, you have one, one, from zero to nine. So here, your distribution, suppose, if you do it well, you have a nine, totally 10 groups, every group for one digit, zero, one, two, three, something like that, until nine. And the other, the other is ta your target domain. You, you also get a feature, get a, you get a feature and also feature distribution. Now, you try to force them, force the distribution match together. So we, you can introduce the, what we call adversarial loads. Try to measure the, the difference between two distribution. Try to force them. Uh, yeah, this is something very similar to the GAN, okay, adversarial loads. And once you, you make the distribution match together, you can simply based on the classifier you change for source domain to the target domain. Okay, idea is simple, but if you look detail, have some problems, such like a negative transfer, because eventually these two domains, source domain, target domain, are different. So in the source domain, uh, there are some part 
there are some information is specific for uh, uh, source. Some part is common. They can share between the source part and the source part and the target part. So for common part, you can transfer. It's what we call domain invariant feature. We can transfer, no problem. But if you transfer the specific part, this, this part is not belong to the target. You transfer it, you will, you will bring the wrong information to the, uh, the, 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 the new parking lot or the new model. So it's what we call negative transfer. So once you, have, you find this problem, you can quickly, you, you may have this kind of idea, say, how about do the distangle representation? Let's try to distangle the information from source domain to, um, to source part and the com or specific part and the common part. And target also do the same thing. And later on, after we check the specific part, we, set, we put it, put it, put it um, on the side and only force the common part, the distribution. Uh, uh, we, we only do the domain attention uh, on the common part and later on do the clarifier. So once you have the idea, we, try, we can try to modify our network. We have feature extraction right now, not only have a, a universal feature, but divide, uh, decompose is into common part and a specific part for source domain and target domain. And only force the common part to be, the distribution to be same and apply the same classifier. And in order to make sure this network can learn, so you can introduce the reconstruction nodes. So, um, uh, not only the feature extraction, we also have a decoder to decode or generate the final output image that is similar to your original. So this kind of loads can help your system become, um, uh, train, train your system become more robust. But there's a problem here, say, how, how could you make sure your distinguished representation can de decompose the uh, feature very well? Uh, uh, in the previous time, uh, people do the distinguished representation in the supervised way. They, they give you the, the, the label so you know what, kind, what is the specific, specific part, who is, what is the common part. But here, we want, what we want to do is unsupervised way. So how could you make sure your feature extraction can do a, can do a good uh, factor decomposition? So later on, we think about uh, could we borrow some information from style transfer? So the idea of side transfer is like this. Right now, uh, suppose you can do the decomposing very well. You get a common part, specific part. And target also common part, specific part. Combine the common part from target and specific part from source. You can generate some image based on GAN. You can synthesize some images. This image, they have content, very content same with your target domain. But their style, here you can see the writing style is the source domain. On the, other, on the other hand, you can do the same thing in the target domain. You generate the feature, same content with the source domain, but the, the style is from target domain. So you have this idea, then we begin to uh, extend our network. So right now, we already have the common part and the uh, force length is really same. Now we begin to change the, change the common part and source part and go to the G uh, G generator, GAN, and generate some images. You have, a, you have generator, definitely when you do a training, you need to have a discriminator, so you form a GAN. So you generate this image and hope this e general image and your original image um, are quite, um, quite similar, I mean the style, so your discriminator cannot distinguish this. So you have GAN here. And in the target part, you also do the same thing. Okay, now you have style transfer. How could we use the style transfer to help the distinguish representation? So this is something we, we want to answer. And uh, if, we, if we can do this, then we will find domain adaptation is actually highly reactive to this single representation and the style transfer. This three problem, originally people discussed this three problem, this three problem independently, but maybe they can combine together. So here we do this. Originally we don't have this kind of feedback loop here. Feedback loop here. Here we introduce the feedback loss. So you have the new feature, go to the generator, become something like an image here. And this image go to the extractor, feature extractor. You will get another feature. And this feature will also separate into two parts. If your feature extractor are doing very well, this specific part from source, common part from target should be matched with each other. So the, the distance here between this new feature, this new extractor feature and original feature should be close to each other. 
So this fee value can help the whole the whole training system more robust and try to connect the style transfer and uh, uh, a disentangled representation. So finally, we uh, propose this framework, three-in-one framework, combine these three, the domain attention style transfer, disentangled representation together, and uh, make the domain attention become more robust. And, uh, uh, and here are some here are some uh, some um, preliminary uh, experimental result we use in the some ditch data set three actually three uh, here is the style of those ditch data set and uh, data we do a domain domain transformation in this figure you can see uh, the green one and the red one is the common part from the source and target so right now uh, each 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 one have totally 10 groups, means the digit from 0 to 9. And the, those content right now, this di distribution are matched together. That means we do the domain attention very well. But for a specific part from the source and the target, that's those specific parts are also separate. That means we do not make confused between the common part and specific part. And this is some of the other experience. So let's just quickly prove that this network can do the things uh, that's what we want. And here is some result for style transfer. Uh, the hand side is the, um, the original uh, source domain images. And the uh, right hand side, we generate the images have the same content with the source, but the style is from the target. So you can see here 3630, but writing style is in the target. Another, another direction is you generate the, the, uh, the content from the target, but the style is in the source the source style, so this is something, but uh, not, not, not perfect, still have some, um, some, uh, some situation cannot work very well. That means this work still have some room to improve. And recently we begin to uh, apply this network to uh, this model, and this model is, we, we want to do the transformation, model, we, we hope the model in the daytime classification for parking space detection can be applied to the nighttime. So here is our result, you can see if we input, uh, we treat the nighttime page as the, as the target page, and uh, based on this framework work, we can generate an image something like this. Is the, is the image content of these images, but in the daytime. So it, uh, this tells you that this network, the style transfer right now, in this case, it becomes something like an image enhancement or um, try to overcome the nighttime issue. And uh, we can also power a classification models we change in the daytime applied to nighttime. Okay, so this is some uh, current result we have. So finally, uh, I almost run out of my time, so let's quite try to uh, recap and conclude the, my today's talk. I quickly review the traditional um, pattern recognition methods. Uh, most of those methods ha have a very special feature. It, those features are designed by human. And uh, we also consider support vector machine and patient graphical model, such like that. And later on, we talk about two our, uh, our, rec our recent uh, research result. One is the pure DNN based method for space uh, inference. And that one including the multi, uh, multitask contrastive network and spatial transfer network and combined with CNN. Besides, we also talk about a unified framework for unsupervised domain adaptation. We combine the distinct representation and style transfer together. We, we hope this kind of framework can get a um, more robust, unsupervised domain adaptation result. So, uh, yes, this is the, the result we have. And uh, many of those wor work are contributed by our lab members. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, before <laughs> the final things, I also have something to add about that. First one is uh, we have a workshop in Taiwan. We do welcome all our friends here. Uh, pop, uh, try to submit your paper to IEEE ABSS conference, and the, the conference day night is the end of this month. If you pass the day night, you can also try the workshop. And this year, ABSS and uh, another important um, conference, ICIP, Inter International Conference on Image Processing, all host in, the, in Taiwan, and they are side by side. So after ABSS is ICIP. So that's good. If you travel one time in Taiwan, you can join two very uh, important conferences. So 
if they have if they have time, please try it. And uh, when you visit Taiwan, you can contact me. You have the, my information. Okay, I will let, I upload two hosts. And the left hand side is something uh, about our uh, about our lab. If you are interested in studying in Taiwan, please contact me. So yeah, this is my today's talk. Uh, thank you very much for everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving a very long and beautiful story about how to develop an uh, intelligent vision by uh, Sparking Load Management System. And we have uh, time for questions, so please. Yes. Looking back on it, would you advise people to always start with doing the shared features or just jump directly to the deeper learning models? Okay, so uh, honest, honestly, I, I should say that um, if you try the deep learning methods, performance better than human uh, design feature. But it depends, you need to have, but, but when I say better, it means you have enough level. So you, you need to have enough training, training data. So usually the scale me, should be medium or half medium. So if, once you have this kind of data and well defined, you well define your problem. The, the model is very amazing. They can learn very good feature for you. But the, the best thing is right now, my, many of my, um, my lab members, they, they are very good at programming this, but they don't know what happened inside the, the network. They don't know this is black box. So we also try to uh, explain this. So right now there's another research team begin to understand what happened. A lab tool will be developed, another lab algorithm try to understand, analyze what happened, what kind of feature you learn. But I will also say, uh, students, you also need to take the traditional pattern recognition codes. They will give you some sense when you try to design the network. Because when you design the network, if you just treat it, do it end-to-end -end training, it's good for project, not good for research. Right now, um, this field improves a lot. So if you just do end-to-end -end training, it's uh, very difficult to have a very um, out, uh, outperformance result now. So still need to take some uh, traditional code. They will give you some idea, and you can borrow this idea, try to design the, the, the framework. Yeah, the need, give the new framework, yeah. So, Professor Huang, yeah. So, so how do you handle the case when uh, the space for the cars uh, have different width? Like for the one for the like, handicaps, they are wider than the other spot? So you, you say the... Uh, uh, so, you say again, you say again, you say like, again, uh, uh, Like, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so the problem is the, the, the size of vehicle and displacement problem, right? So, no, not the size of the vehicle, the size of the parking space, like for handicapped parking space, they are at least 1.5 uh, or twice as large as the normal space. Yeah, so uh, right now this system uh, focus on uh, this kind of very regular parking space. So if your space are very big and not regular, so maybe this framework can still need to modify a little bit. And uh, because as we, as we mentioned here, the feature we, we extract is based on occlusion pattern. So right now, if this kind of occlusion pattern is not robust or is missing, then the framework maybe need to redesign. So there's the, the problem such like uh, if you have a, your, your parking, the hour parking space is quite random. So then we can, this kind of feature is very difficult to learn. Or we need to see the, 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 the scene in order to understand what kind of uh, feature we can learn based on the data. Yeah, so maybe currently cannot handle that problem. Yes, so, so talking about like uh, following up when you say specific scene, so how, um, what is, uh, you know, so why, why, why can't we use videos? Suppose you want to build it for a specific site. Wouldn't uh, using the videos, uh, or are you doing something simple like background subtraction or like tracking it, would it, uh, do you know how well it works? Yeah, uh, we, do, we do have another work doing this based on the video and uh, background subtraction or do the checking and uh, try to solve this problem. And uh, uh, we've, uh, but we've, uh, we've, 
we find temporal information can help, but because uh, uh, the, because the accuracy right now is very high enough, so uh, usually that temporal information can help is when the vehicle moving and mobile at that situation, the temporal information can help. But because the accuracy is right, quite high, and uh, in terms of this kind of situation, the, the transition time is very short. So maybe at that moment, uh, the system will make a wrong decision, but it do not affect the, the system's stabilities. So yeah, uh, maybe it's helpful for, for, how to say, for doing research, but for system viewing point, maybe they will try to simplify the system and uh, just make it useful. So, but we do have a, a, a master student do LSTM and try to uh, combine them together. Yeah, but you see the performance is quite high, so very difficult to publish the paper. They say, Professor Huang, don't, don't do this. This problem anymore, you're already 99. <laughs> try to find something, Huang 80, you can do, do something else. So, but we do, we do, do them. Temporary form very helpful. Thank you. So as a question, please. Yes, so I do have one. So actually, I'm very impressive about the uh, result you got from uh, bucking load status uh, detection. So in this case, I wonder if we obtain up to 99% of accuracy, so in the future, how we can still increase this one, yeah. I would say 99 is only for this case specific case. So we spent a lot of effort, 10 years, it's a very long time, to, uh, to understand how to, of course we learn a lot of experience, but so right now we move our research to say how to, how to do the de uh, deployment quickly, transfer learning. There will be more, uh, more interest research work now, have more research value and also more, um, how to say, uh, business values because if you only, you, if you, I, so Many of my company asked me to set up this system for them. I, I need to spend maybe one month or two months to get a system ready and stable. But they cannot wait. Two months, they can earn a, earn a lot of money. They cannot wait for, for so long, long time. They, they will prefer, say, I give you one week. But for example, like uh, something that right now we are trying to do is if you can, after transferring, if you can set up just one camera and put it there, do the self learning or um, uh, automatic learning, one week later, this system can work. So th that would be the, the, the new research direction. Yeah, so, so that will be my, my, that will also have more value uh, when doing machine learning research, yeah. It's our speaker again, so thank you very much. Professor Trần Thị Thanh Hải, who will be chair of the next session, so please. Thank you. So, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Hai from uh, Hanoi University of Science and Technology. I'm very happy to be chair of uh, the first sections on uh, pattern recognition. So, we have four uh, papers to be present. Uh, firstly, I would like to check if all speakers are here. Uh, Sarah Sung, are you here? Vinh Trường, Vinh Trường Hoàng, yes. Bùi Hải Phong and Hoàng Văn Nam, okay. So maybe we shift uh, the first paper and if uh, the other uh, come, we uh, we do with the, the first. Uh, if uh, y you you can uh, uh, copy the presentations uh, on the computer before the presentations, and check if uh, it uh, can uh, work very well. Mr. Wing Chung Wang, are you ready for presentations? Okay. 
So I would like to um, invite uh, the speaker, Ving Chiong Huang, to present the paper on a feeding convolutional neural network by handcraft features based on enhanced neighbor center different image for color texture classifications. So please, you have um, 15 minutes for presentations. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm very honored to be the first, uh, the first uh, one to uh, present a paper. My name is uh, Đức Phan Văn Hoài, and uh, I'm an undergraduate uh, student at uh, Ho Chi Minh City Open University. And uh, I and my uh, advisor, Vinh Trương Hoàng, uh, work on a paper named uh, Feeding Convolutional Neural Network by Handcrafted Feature based on uh, enhanced neighbor center different image for color texture classification. And here is the uh, outline of our previous, uh, presentation. We will start with an uh, introduction. Next, uh, the related works is uh, briefly reviewed. And uh, then, the proposed approach and uh, experiment setup uh, presented. And uh, lastly, the result and uh, conclusion. So first, let me uh, introduce a uh, texture. According to Ertan, the word texture refer to a surface characteristic and uh, appearance of an uh, object given by the Even by the side, the shape, density, arrangement, proportion of its elementary parts. A texture is uh, usually described as smooth or rough, soft or hard, and uh, etc. Here are some examples of uh, the uh, texture of uh, a park, um, tree park, fiber, and a uh, leaf, wood. Texture analysis has, um, is one of the most important field of computer vision with uh, several real-life applications, such as uh, industrial and uh, biomedical surface inspection, material and uh, object classification, and image segmentation. And uh, the uh, texture classification uh, task can be uh, divided into two phases. The first phase uh, feature extraction, and uh, the second one here, uh, classification. However, uh, in the nature, the uh, texture is um, varies of the same object, uh, material uh, vary in illumination, scale, and orientation. So we need a uh, robust descriptor to represent and discriminate the uh, texture from different classes. And uh, I will briefly reveal some uh, related work. One of the most successful uh, statistical approach for uh, texture analysis is uh, local binary button, MVB for short. And uh, here is uh, an uh, illustration of uh, MVB extraction process. MVB use the central pixel and uh, neighboring pixel values to uh, extract the uh, values. Firstly, uh, the uh, neighboring pixel values is um, tested by the uh, values of uh, central pixel. The result is uh, set to one if uh, the uh, neighboring uh, values is uh, greater than the central value and uh, otherwise it's the set to zero. Then uh, the set stone future results are conformed with a um, weight marks uh, to produce the result. 
and lastly there is um, some some stuff to uh, acquire LBB values uh, the advantages of the LBB uh, computational efficiency high discriminative power and uh, robustness against uh, illumination however it's uh, got some uh, disadvantages such as uh, vulnerable to uh, rotation and uh, noisy image low uh, low magnetic information due to the um, threshold on step as so here several variant to LBB have been proposed to uh, minimize its uh, mini limitation neighbor center different image a one among them uh, it has been proposed by Wu and Lin in uh, 2018 and here is uh, illustration of uh, the uh, extra feature extraction process similar to uh, LBB NDCI use the uh, central values and uh, neighboring pixel values to uh, extract the feature the values but uh, but uh, instead of uh, using press on they uh, subtract the center value from neighboring pixel values as so here and uh, then the, uh, the uh, values from different batch of uh, the image is uh, collected and uh, reconstruct the uh, uh, NDCI uh, feature as so here each NDCI has uh, information uh, had edge information in a different uh, direction and now we are uh, we will uh, briefly review the uh, convolutional neural network and uh, it's a uh, recently have shown to provide very good results in several com computer vision tasks such as uh, object classification, object segmentation, face recognition and etc. CNN model is normally uh, trained on label RGB images However, several approach, approaches have proposed to um, fit CNN with the uh, handcrafted feature and have sought to provide, uh, to enhance the uh, accuracy of Le Levi and Hasner in uh, 2015 transformed the uh, LBB images to uh, LBB maps, got these images which is used as an uh, input for CNN model. The, they have shown to uh, increase the uh, uh, accuracy in uh, phase, phase uh, expression recognition. And in uh, 2018, Hosini et al. proposed to fit CNN with the uh, GABA response map and uh, apply for several phase related work like um, phase recognition, phase expression recognition, edge um, estimation and etc. And uh, finally Wu and Lin fits CNN with neighbor center different image and uh, so to uh, enhance the uh, accuracy on um, phase expression uh, task and here is our proposed feature based on the uh, neighbor center different image. Uh, the NDCI feature mainly store only uh, edge information. Therefore, we uh, propose to uh, concatenate the uh, right scale image to um, with uh, a channel NDCI to uh, acquire enhanced NDCI, which it contain. Uh, edge and also the illumina illumination information as so here the uh, eight N A channel uh, NDCI uh, is track at uh, this right above and then we uh, combine with right scale image to uh, obtain E NDCI and here is the uh, proposed model to uh, 
uh, extract the uh, feature from RGB image and combine it with the feature from NDCI. Our model, uh, our two stream model was created with two VGC16 networks as shown here. Uh, the feature from uh, the feature extract from RGB image and uh, NDCI image a uh, concatenate at the last convolutional layer and uh, input into a um, series of uh, drop out and fully connected layer to classify and uh, drop out rates of um, drop out layers is set to 50%. And uh, here we will, I uh, will um, show uh, some uh, detail of the data set and uh, set up uh, experimental setup. The uh, proposed method is uh, evaluated on uh, four benchmark color texture data sets, namely new part test, out, out text, this is 13. USB stack and X stack. Each data set is uh, divided into training set and testing set by horned down methods. Here is uh, the uh, table summarize uh, the information of uh, for uh, the set we use in experiment. The uh, new box test data set they, um, has the has the um, image the smallest uh, image size of uh, 64 by 64 pixels and uh, on order the set had um, uh, image size of uh, 128 by 128 pixels and the number of class of uh, new block test is uh, at least had the least uh, number of class which is uh, six here and uh, the um, the uh, X stack the, the set has uh, the most uh, number, of, the highest number of class, which is uh, 476 classes. And here is some uh, example from uh, for uh, image from uh, for texture data sets. Each image here represents a um, class in uh, at the the data set. And here is the detail of uh, uh, experimental setup. We um, implement all the models using uh, Keras framework and the training and testing process are performed on uh, a Google Cloud platform with a uh, configuration of uh, a CPUs 2.5 gigahertz with um, 52 gig of RAM and one uh, NVIDIA Tesla P100 GPU with uh, 16 gig of RAM. And the uh, multi-graph technique was used as a form of uh, data augmentation. The, um, this technique is uh, not used uh, for uh, new bug tests due to its uh, low resolution. On other data set, we uh, graph five region with uh, the size of um, 60, uh, 96 by 96 pixels. For a uh, for reason, the uh, crop uh, align with four corners, and uh, the last one is uh, crop from the center of image. All models are uh, fine-tuned with uh, the same hyper parameter for uh, a fair comparison. The batch size for new bug test is 16, and 64 for order data sets. And uh, all models use uh, ADAM optimizer with a learning rate of uh, 10 to the power of uh, minus 5. And then when the uh, accuracy stop improving from, uh, in the uh, evaluated set, we uh, drop the um, learning rate by a factor of 10. And here is uh, the uh, classification accuracy of uh, our proposed model compared with all the approach on for the set in the state of the art. 
as shown here, the um, proposed uh, method uh, consistently consistently um, outperform the uh, VGJ16 model only trained on RGB image. And uh, on new bug test uh, set, the uh, deep learning models improve the state of the art by uh, a um, margin of more than 1.8 percent the uh, proposed um, approach if a um, accuracy of 95.6 percent which is 1.2 percent better than the model only trained on uh, RGB image. In the case of uh, Altep TC13, the, uh, the uh, handcrafted uh, feature approach has so to provide a better result than uh, our approach. However, from uh, in uh, order that set, we uh, so the proposed approach has so to provide very good result with the uh, our form state of the art uh, by more by uh, two three percent on new block test. 2% on USB test and 1.9% uh, on XTEC. In the uh, USB tech uh, data set, our model uh, achieved a very good result of 99.6%, uh, which is uh, 0.3 uh, better than the model uh, only trained on RGB image. And, uh, improve the state of the art by uh, 2%. Uh, lastly, in the aesthetic dissect, we uh, the proposed approach give a um, accuracy of 97.6%, uh, which is uh, 1.4% 1, 1. better than the model only trained on RGB image. And, uh, now we'll form the uh, state of the art by uh, 0.9%. And the main point of this uh, paper is design a new type of uh, handcrafted feature, namely ENDCI, which contain the uh, edge and illumination information. And uh, the second uh, contribution of this uh, paper is uh, we design a uh, two-stream model to combine and extract the feature from RGB images and uh, the uh, complementary information from ENDCI. And the future of this work is now to the now extended to combine different features to fully capture the uh, local and the global information. And uh, thank for your attention. We use the pre-trained uh, network from uh, RGB image, and uh, the other is trained on the uh, um, data set, and uh, we combine them to uh, the combine the feature to and uh, we fine tune again uh, on a new uh, fully connected layer here. No. Here is the uh, one. Uh, here I have the nine channel because yes, because uh, a a channel from NDCI and one channel from a uh, right scale image and uh, three the other stream use three three channel from uh, RGB image. Yeah, this model we um actually is uh, had um. Uh, the computation time is uh, double, but uh, 
what's the accuracy? Other questions? Uh, I have one more question. Um, when you use to stream uh, VGG, so uh, do you have any comparisons? If you remove one channel and if you use a bus channel, how the uh, accuracy is improved? I uh, haven't tried it yet. You didn't try it yet? Yeah, I just uh, tried uh, like O and Lin and uh, put on the channel. With, and, uh, it could be better to analyze more the, the important roles of each uh, channels in the Thank the you. Network. I will uh, try it yeah. later. <laughs> Yes. So uh, I think uh, it, it, for texture recognition, it seems yeah, reasonable. So recently, there's also a bunch of work on kind of non-local network and like attention mechanism to try to figure out the self-similarity within the image itself. I think it might be uh, interesting to look at that direction too, so you can train a single network for this type of feature too. OK, yeah. I will try it later. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you for the presentations. Uh, thank so, you for your time. Yeah. I would like to invite the next speaker, Bui Hai Phong, to present uh, their papers on mathematical variable detection based on convolutional neural network and support vector machine. So please.
I'm sorry for technical issues, uh, so please wait a little bit to change the PC. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Wei Fong. I'm from Mika International Institute from Hanoi University of Science and Technology. I'm uh, very happy to uh, present a topic, Mathematical Variable Detection based on the Convolutional Neural Network and Support Vector Machine. Uh, there are four parts in uh, the presentation. Uh, firstly, I would like to introduce about the issue of detection variable. Uh, after that, I would like to describe the proposed method. Uh, then I talk about the experiment and uh, 
uh, finally, uh, I uh, give some uh, conclusion and uh, the future work. Uh, in the uh, recently, in the document digitalization, uh, the, we have many uh, research in this field, and a key step in the field is that the detection of the mathematical expression, and based on the appearance of the uh, expression, uh, we can classify the two groups. The first one is the display or isolated expression, uh, and the second one is the inline or embedded expression. Uh, the isolated uh, expression uh, is separate from other components and uh, is obtained the high accuracy in the detection. Uh, meanwhile, the inline expression uh, uh, have many, uh, have many uh, challenges in the detection because uh, it's very uh, high variation in the five, the font and size and uh, it looks similarly to text and in the work uh, we try to detect the uh, variable from inline expression and uh, in the slide the uh, uh, red is uh, example of uh, display expression and the blue is example of uh, inline expression. Uh, uh, so far there are some existing uh, approach uh, for the uh, expression detection and uh, uh, almost the uh, approach uh, try to uh, uh, extract the handcrafted feature and then they uh, use a classifier, classifier to detect the uh, expression uh, such as in uh, the work in uh, 2013 uh, the uh, work try to uh, uh, use the text localization and uh, text line and word segmentation after that they extract the layout feature uh, such as the density of reason, uh, left or right indent of reason, and uh, variation of width and height uh, of character. And the uh, SVM is used for the detection. Uh, another work try to use the optical character technique to locate the det detection, uh, to de locate the expression by uh, using mathematical symbol and then they try to group and merge uh, neighbor reason to form uh, uh, to form an expression based on the predefined threshold and um, it's uh, mentioned that and there are many difficulties in the detection of uh, inline expression without using the optical character recognition and in our work, we uh, propose uh, a method uh, that uh, employ and optimize the uh, uh, CNN uh, as a feature extraction and um, a classifier that is FVM to uh, uh, detect the variable uh, from inline expression. Uh, uh, here is an example of uh, a variable. Uh, we, are, uh, <coughs> we have uh, the variable uh, represented by the alphabetical character and uh, it can contain some index and uh, is a display in the italic style. And uh, for the proposed method, uh, we have uh, uh, three uh, phase in the first phase, we try to apply the document analysis uh, technique to uh, segment the input document into tagline and uh, word. Uh, and uh, after having the tagline, we uh, apply the isolated expression module to uh, determine if a tagline is a uh, isolated expression or not. And uh, after that, uh, an uh, non isolated expression uh, continue to be segmented into words 
uh, and the word uh, is determined and um, variable or not by using the uh, CNN and SVM the uh, contribution uh, uh, mark by the red uh, color. Uh, so for the uh, data preparation, we use the uh, input document uh, uh, is segment into the text line and word by using the uh, projection method. Uh, we use this method because uh, it's uh, quite fast and uh, simple uh, in the um, uh, uh, simple computation. And um, uh, here is an example. Uh, we have an, uh, a uh, document image in the input, and the input document is segmented into the text line. Uh, uh, and uh, after having a text line, we continue to uh, segment it into the word. The process is uh, uh, done by uh, uh, using the uh, observation that uh, uh, the word uh, uh, have a lack, a lack of uh, uh, wide spec than that of a uh, character in a word. So um, we uh, uh, observe the sum of pixels along the uh, vertical and uh, horizontal uh, to detect the text line and word. After having the data, we uh, try to um, use the uh, CNN for the feature extractor. Uh, the uh, input uh, is the, the image of a variable and text. And uh, after that, uh, the uh, CNN are used uh, as a feature extractor uh, to uh, uh, as the CNN requirement, we have to pre-process the input document, input uh, uh, variable and text image to uh, red, green, blue, and to the side uh, as the CNN requirement. Uh, after that, we have uh, 4,000 uh, and 1,000 features. Uh, Extracted by the ugliness and ResNet 50 respectively. After having the feature, we use the SVM to classify the input image to the variable or text. We use the CNN because in the work in 2015, it's point that the CNN, the DCNN, uh, extract uh, effective feature for the text classification task. Uh, here is some uh, uh, parameter of the uh, alignness and uh, and ResNet that we uh, use for the feature extraction in the work. Uh, and uh, for the experiment, we um, uh, carry the carry out the experiment on the uh, public uh, data set that is the MacMod data set. Uh, the data set contains 400 scientific documents in uh, both PDF and uh, image format. And in the data set, we have uh, 1,500 isolated and uh, expression and um, more than 7,000 of uh, inline expression. Mm, uh, after the data preparation, we have the training uh, set that contain 340 images of each type of variable and word. And for the testing, we have uh, 400 of uh, word images and uh, uh, 300 of uh, variable with uh, one character and uh, 72 variable containing index. Uh, for the comparison, uh, for the performance comparison with uh, existing method, we uh, 
uh, try to use uh, two existed methods that is the orientation of gradient and the discrete wavelet transformation and uh, uh, it uh, so that the uh, use of uh, CNN and SVM the upper form of uh, uh, traditional method uh, because the existing method uh, are effective uh, with uh, long uh, word but for short word uh, in the case of uh, variable it uh, not really effective and uh, compared to the transfer learning uh, of uh, the CNN the uh, combination of uh, CNN and SVM also uh, outperform because the uh, our training uh, data set is not really large so the combination of uh, the CNN and SVM uh, a little bit uh, obtain higher accuracy than that of transfer learning uh, and uh, uh, for the um, imaging of the feature extraction we try to uh, visualize the feature extracted by the uh, ResNet uh, 50 and the, uh, we have two group uh, the first one is uh, in the red is the uh, variable and the second one is uh, in blue is uh, uh, text and uh, uh, they almost uh, separate but uh, in some case in uh, it can be uh, very close because the uh, uh, dimension is reduced from a thousand to two dimension uh, by using the uh, principal component analysis and um, for the conclusion uh, we uh, have proposed a method to detect variable from variable from document image uh, in the method the deep uh, convolutional neural network uh, combined with the SVM uh, outperform existing uh, method uh, because the uh, existing method uh, not effective in some case of uh, short word uh, and in our, our work the, the variable is uh, quite short and for the future work we try to use other tech localization and segmentation technique to have a robustness of the uh, pre-processing and, and after that we try to employ other context information to improve the accuracy of the detection uh, so that's uh, the main content of uh, the presentation and uh, thank you so much for your and listening. Thank you. So, do you have uh, questions or comments? Yes? Uh, okay, so I then. have two questions. Firstly, how did you convert the image into uh, from grayscale, I, I, as I understand correctly, to color? Uh, thank you uh, uh, so much, Professor, for your question. And um, in uh, our case, uh, I uh, try to um, uh, uh, use some uh, uh, very short word uh, uh, because uh, after the uh, data preparation, uh, the words uh, are segmented by using the the threshold so uh, uh, we have some so 
uh, we have some um, the the width the width of a pixel a little pixel so uh, very big pixel uh, filter a filter based on yeah uh, so uh, the small the the filter out very big yeah just uh, just some short or medium uh, okay uh, and uh, actually um, uh, for the uh, uh, converted uh, the gray uh, uh, to uh, red, blue, green, uh, blue, uh, I uh, use a um, preview function in uh, MATLAB, uh, and uh, as my understanding, uh, it uh, try uh, to um, uh, man, man, multiple uh, uh, each channel uh, to uh, to another uh, another dimension to have uh, uh, three three channel. Yeah, I use uh, my pre a pre build as function and uh, yeah. Um, as, I men uh, as you mentioned that you also compare with the uh, trains for learning, right? right. Yeah. Uh, so what kind of trains for learning you use uh, here for uh, comparison? Uh, uh, thank you for the question. Um, in the uh, transfer learning, uh, because uh, 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 existing uh, CNN are uh, used for another um, task of uh, text classification, the classification such as a doc uh, document. Uh, classification or something like that is not uh, uh, for only text and variable. So I uh, transfer uh, from cut, cut down the number of uh, number of uh, uh, classification. Uh, example, uh, in the original, they have um, uh, thousand. Example, they have thousand of uh, uh, classification uh, uh, group. I just cut down to uh, keep the two two label, uh, variable and non-variable. Okay. Yeah. So actually, you only use the um, retrain way yeah. to initialize the uh, framework and then uh, fine tune, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I I have a question for you. Uh, can you tell me how much uh, work in your dictionary to you uh, to you for uh, KNN and um, why you uh, why you uh, you don't um, implement um, segmentation by uh, character? Why you choose uh, segment segment by word? Because because when you segmentation by um, word, uh, there um there are many word in uh, English. You cannot uh, if you um, um, you 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 make a bread a product. You cannot call it enough word. For for your uh, training data set. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, because um, uh, in uh, I just uh, in my uh, work I just uh, use one one of the uh, uh, preparation technique. That's uh, that is the uh, uh, the uh, uh, production. But uh, in reality, uh, there are many um, other kind many other kind of uh, uh, data preparation such as uh, as you explain uh, character uh, split so just uh, I uh, try to the next uh, in the future I mentioned that in the future I try to another uh, um, text and uh, uh, document segmentation to have a robustness um, I mean that's uh, another uh, technique uh, for example character or bounding box or Connect the component and try, yeah. In the next time. Yes. Thank you. Uh, very very good work. Uh, I have a sh uh, some questions. First one is this: you are, when you do a training, you only using the three hundred and forty images. Here, you know, training your the number is three hundred and forty. Uh, but your dimension, I remember you have dimension, the feature dimension is, is more than uh, 1,000, right? 1,000, something like that. Your feature dimension is more than 1,000, right? Later on, you change your SVM. So
Did you apply something like a PCA or, re or feature reduction to reduce the feature before you change your SVM? So, uh, sorry, I am not uh, very clear okay. about. So here, you, your training number is small, 340. You used it to change your support vector machine, right? But your feature dimension seems too high, uh, uh, 1,000 something. So do you do you do anything to reduce the dimension before you change your support vector machine? Otherwise, how could you find a a suitable? Because you are very sparse. Your sample in the 100,000 uh, dimension is very sparse. So how could you know your support vector machine is good? Uh, actually, uh, no. I just use um, uh, all the feature extracted by CNN. But uh, as your suggestion, I I think uh, if we can. Um, Reduce. Um, it may be the uh, save the cost. So thank you for the suggestion. I think the, I can. The, the other thing is uh, right now you are using LSNet or residual net. Uh, they have several feature feature map. So right now you use all of them. Maybe you need to try a different layer. The feature from different layer have a different performance. Maybe. So yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, this is uh, suggestions for the work, for the future work. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for the uh, okay. suggestion. Yeah. Uh, thanks again. Yeah. So now uh, I would like to invite uh, Van Nam Huang to present his papers on 3D skeleton based action recognitions with convolutional neural networks. Okay, so good morning, everyone. My name is Van Nam Wang from the Hanoi University of Science and Technology. Uh, and this time, I'm going to present our work named 3D Skeleton-Based Action Recognition with Convolutional Neural Network. Uh, my work is actually some kind of similar to Professor Huai's work, but uh, it's <laughs> with, uh, the difference is we use another data as an input, uh, as a work with Professor Huai use color data. And in our work, we use 3D skeleton, but also solve the same problem of accent recognition. So first, let me introduce a bit about human accent analysis. Uh, actually, human accent analysis refers to a series of problems in the computer vision and machine learning. As you can see here in the figure, the horizontal axis shows the time scale of the input data, and the vertical bar shows the resolution of our data. Obviously, the lower Shorter time scale means that we have a higher resolution method. Uh, at the frame level, we have the problem of post estimation, which is uh, finding the location on the joy on, in the image. And the next problem is action classification. Some work refer to it as a 
action prediction or early prediction where the prediction action happened during the action. And the, the third is uh, actually my focus on this paper is the action recognition, which is the prediction happened after the action actually happened. And there are two more problems, which is tracking and activity recognition, which I didn't mention in our paper, but it's very complex. And uh, it had a, a lot of potential application using the action recognition, such as video surveillance, interactive environment, video retrieval, spot annotation, and things like that. But it also has some limitations, such as the huge computational cost, and your methods should capture a long context, and there's just no standard benchmark data set. And it's going to raise to the next question, why using skeleton data? Because Professor Huai also saw the very outstanding result using just color video. So in, when it comes to human action recognition, uh, there, there are typically three ways to solve three type data input. Uh, first, the color, then depth, and skeleton. And I, I show the comparison between the three methods in this table. When it, uh, first, the color da data, we have a very noisy data because we have, may have a very complex background, like lighting condition may be changed, we may be encountered with occlusion. But with that way, we had more accurate data and more robust and color data. Uh, for example, you can see in, in the uh, video below, the background in this case can be easily removed by using the very simple distance threshold. With a skeleton base, we have a, a better accurate the better and the color, but it's still noisy. About the complexity, uh, the color and the depth had a very high demand, dimension. Uh, the a typical image we had uh, uh, normally is a million color pixels, so we can convert it to a million dimensional feature vector. But with the skeleton bay, we normally had a lower than 100 uh, uh, by, say, uh, 25 joy multiplied with three coordinate x, y, z. So, less than 100 for, per, per human. And with a color base, it uh, normally achieves a high accuracy, but high accuracy might normally come with high cost of computation. Uh, uh, with a depth base and skeleton base, uh, uh, accuracy not so high, but there are just few work focus on this. So I think it's a per, per perspective of a researcher, it's a good way to look at this kind of data and try to uh, do, uh, investigate it. So and by using the skeleton data, there are actually some challenges. Like first, uh, human, human can come with a variable scale, by like small or big person. And sometimes the human data is very noisy, as you can see in the left bottom. The, the hand reason is very noisy. Uh, and it also comes with a, very, a variable view orientation, because the, the camera can be uh, positioned in a very different way. And another problem he called the rate variation, which is the speed of the subject. Some, some person like to perform it in a very fast way. Say, for example, the punch, this is a punch, punch action. If you ask a man to do that, they may do it very quickly. But if you ask a woman to do that, they, they maybe do it very slowly. Uh, and another problem, I think, is the uh, nature of the human action recognition is the intra and inter action variation, which is the uh, some different action clan maybe have some very similar appearance. So that is some challenges. Actually, uh, there are a lot of work to try to uh, solve this problem. Uh, at the first, on the top left, uh, some Houston and Houston work try to do the covariant matrix to uh, calculate the variance between two different joys to represent the skeleton at the single feature vector. Uh, each skeleton will be converted into the feature vector and fit into the classifier. And come to, uh, to the Yongdu in 2015, they use a bi-directional neural network to take the raw data, XYZ data, in the hierarchical way like this, so uh, temporal and uh, uh, sparse information can be reserved. And to bottom, uh, method to convert the skeleton into the image data, which is our method is trying to do like that, so I will explain it later. So our approach goes like that. Given the skeleton sequence, we first do data normalization and augmentation, 
and then we represent it, which is convert the XYZ skeleton data into the image, and finally we take the conventional deep neural net to make a prediction. In this case, it's CNN and CNN LSTM architecture. So let's first talk about data normalization and augmentation. Uh, this figure, uh, this figure here, so the visualization of the skeleton sequence. The the uh, the blue one is the uh, first, uh, the beginning of the action, and the red is the end of the action. And we, we first do normalize by subject, uh, subject the sequence to to it mean so that we have the data with the zero mean, and then we use the accelerometer vector to normalize, the, to rotate the data, so that the, you can see here the normally aligned to the horizontal axis. We also do some augmentation technique, like the, the add random noise to each joist and rotate it, it around the z-axis, so that we can simulate the effect of uh, camera viewpoint changing in our work. And the next problem is to uh, represent the skeleton sequence into the image. Uh, so this, is, this figure shows the basic idea. So we can think uh, about skeleton data as a, five, a point in the 5D space, where X, Y, Z is the coordinate of the joy, F means the time, and N means the location of the joy in the body. So by some reason, Image also has the five dimension like X, Y mean the point coordinate, and we have the RGB channel in the image. So we can map in the the, uh, the point in the five, this five D space to this five D space. Uh, so actually, there are about ten way to map in this. You can see, you can see it in the lower figure here. But the most popular way is the map X, Y, Z to RGB. Since XYZ has the same row, and so the RGB has also the same row. So we, we ended up with an image like this, where the horizontal axis shows the location, and the, and the vertical axis shows the, the time of the sequence. And not just that, if you, uh, the, another problem you should take into account is the, uh, the order of the skeleton. For example, in the left figure is a number that provided by uh, Microsoft. If you do it, uh, if you represent it like this, for example, the joy number five and the joy number 21 has a very close in the body, but in our feature vector, it's at very far distance. So we also uh, take, uh, uh, employ the work on this paper, and they, uh, they represent the uh, skeleton at the chi bay and go to that first traverser to make the feature representation. So that two points are glow in the body is guaranteed to be glow in our feature vector since so that we can take advantage of convolutional neural nets in each uh, convolutional has the limited field of view. So other than that, we also add another channel called velocity channel, and it can be easily calculated by divided the different in, in location to the different in time. So that yeah, this figure illustrates the four channel. First, uh, uh, first, uh, first one is a visualization of the action four in the CMA four, and here's X, Y, Z, and velocity channel. As you can see here in the Z channel, uh, the the color is. Uh, uh, decrease so fast, so it means that the, the location of the body is uh, decreased during the full action. And the velocity channel, there's some bar, bright spot. Uh, this, this, mean the, this is correspond to hip, hip reason. It means that when people fall into the ground, the, the velocity of hip reason is changing very fast, but not the, uh, in our body. So that may be helpful in some case. And finally, we take the conventional neural net, like we desire a network uh, that's inspired by VGG, which has a five a neural, a CNN layer. Each layer has the two conversion block, following by, following by the uh, map pooling and drop out. And with CNN LSTM, we use the uh, same CNN architecture, but we add 
through LSTM layer. Uh, we want to investigate if LSTM is good for representing the uh, temporal information. And then we test it with two different data sets, which is uh, NTU RGBD, which is the largest in this field, and the CMD4. CMD the NTU RGBD had the 60 different action class, but it had a lot of sequence, say 50K, more than 50K, and the CMD4 had the 20 class, but it only had 2,000 sequence. Another problem is with NTU RGBD, they use, they use skeleton version, a kinetic version too, so what? That we had more accurate data and more uh, body joy, say 25 versus 22, uh, 20 in the case of kinetic version 1. So that's a big difference between two data sets. About implementation, as I said before, we use CNN by like uh, five conversion block and the skeleton image will compute on the whole action sequence. And with the K of CNN and LSDM, we use a skeleton image to compute on the one second period and to fit into the network. And we use Adam optimizer with Mark E 100 and with kernel library and TensorFlow backend and the hardware configuration you can see here on the screen. And here's our experiment results. Uh, with the CMD4 data set, we say so that the velocity can contribute about 5 to 6 percent of improvement. But uh, using CNN LATM uh, actually is a decrease the result. But in the case of the anti RGBD, by adding velocity and LSDM, the final result, the result can be improve, improved. I think that's mostly because of uh, this complexity of this model, CNN and LSDM we require more data training. In the case of CMD4, we had a few samples, say 22,000 uh, sequence. And another problem comes to our argumentation since CMD4 introduced some direction away action. For example, bike, bike four, bike four, left four, right and front four. But uh, somehow our argumentation, which is the uh, rotated data along this Z axis, when kind of erase the hint to recognize this direction. So that is a problem. Uh, for example, you can here see the visualization of 404. Uh, for, I believe if, if I remove the title here, you can, would be able to recognize which is the right, which is the front and left, right, for. So that is a problem. So in conclusion, we propose a skeleton based framework using both CNN and LSTM and we'll also experiment it on the different data sets and it shows some potential results. And also for the velocity channel so some improvement to the final result. And in future work, we would like to try with different network architecture to, and fine graining the training parameter. Also, as well as add more feature to skeleton image. And more importantly, we would like to investigate the contribution of big, big feature to the final results, which is very important. And then, we also want to evaluate on the different data set. So that is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So uh, please uh, give him some comments or questions. Um, thank you for your presentation. So actually, I have two questions. Uh, two quick, uh, questions. The first one is, uh, because you use a skeleton, right? Yep. Uh, and how can you extract the skeleton from the image? Just use the yeah. Kinect uh, SDK. Uh, yeah, we just use the Kinect SDK, okay. which is uh, estimated by the uh, random forest. Okay. Estimate from depth imaging. Okay. So the second question is, uh, sometimes due to the occlusion, so maybe some some yard you will miss. Yes. Yeah. So h how can you handle the kind of uh, situation? Uh, Actually, there uh, in the two, those two data sets, data set, there are not much occlusion. Just a whole mm -hmm. whole subject in the images. Yeah. Mm, okay. Okay. Thank uh. you. No. Uh, thank you for your interesting work. So okay. I have a question for you. Uh, do you think that uh, is this necessary to use CNN there? Because 
uh, to me, I think that uh, 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 when you extract uh, the skeleton w uh, vector, yeah. you, you, you can uh, com combine like uh, uh, concatenate or do something with uh, other information and fit it to the LSTM, then it uh, can maybe still work. Uh, um, but um, if, if, if you uh, reconstruct um, the, 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 the skeleton vector as a, a kind of a sparse uh, object like image with a fire channel, like if uh, if you rec reconstruct like this, um, you 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 now have an image like what you uh, uh, pre pre prevent to do um, when you we talk about a drawback of using uh, image. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, is is uh, yeah. Um, so it, what uh, kind of thing that you want to use skeleton vector? So now you uh, reconstruct uh, from an image. So. Yeah. I think it's quite confused about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the first uh, come to the, because currently the current state of the art is all or um, mostly by the, the Im converting skeleton data image data. And secondly, I think the neural net on the image is very successful in terms of classification. So that if you want to do it with raw skeleton data, you will find a very hard time to design the network which it fits suitable, uh, suitable for your data. And I think that's the reason. And actually, those, 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 those uh, methods are outperforming the pre hand design feature, kind of the last margin. Uh, okay, because, because to me, like uh, CNN, the purpose of CNN is extract the useful information feature vector, right? Yes. So, so we, we, we already have the feature vector there uh, from the input, it's uh, the skeleton vector. So mm -hmm. why we still uh, uh, go go through a, a, a mm -hmm. next step CNN? No, I think the most important part about CNN because they kind of learn in the hierarchical way, and each uh, you know, uh, CNN layer will uh, look at the very small pattern in the image and build up and like uh, uh, bottom up. So they, they can find a very pattern in the image, image very. It, it's very good to find a pattern like this, and, but uh, if, if you desire for just a skeleton data, raw skeleton data, you, it would be hard to design this kind of a, a mechanism to detect those feature in terms of sparser and temporal information. It's just very hard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, yes, Steen, one more question. Actually, recently I, I remember we have a network named uh, Grab Synon. So, have you ever tried it? I'm sorry, I didn't try it. Oh, so yeah. Grab Synon try to just model the connection between the uh, yawn. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so maybe later yeah, thank on. Thank you, maybe I'm going to try it later. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the suggestion. Okay, so uh, only one more question because uh, we have uh, limited time. So. <laughs> Um, I'm not in on this field, so my question is: What is the difference between precision recall and F score? Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, precision is uh, related to the how how good your prediction uh, and and uh, recall. So the how the, uh, how well uh, if, if your precision is missing something, it's really bad, bad, right? Uh, pre recall refer to this, this uh, problem uh, of uh, misdetection. And F score is a kind of balance between prison and recall. Yeah. And like I see the score around 40, 50 percent. Like, um, is it a percentage? Uh, yes, percentage. Okay. So is that acceptable? Uh, I think it depends on your application, which is applicable. Appli <laughs> like just, just curious because I'm uh, I'm new. Like, uh, yeah. so I just they like, see In the In terms of research, a uh, uh, better or higher. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot for a lot of uh, useful comments for the presentations. Yeah, so thank thanks you. again. So um, <laughs> we uh, we have uh, the last uh, presentations come from uh, Sang Ha Sung uh, with the uh, titles uh, verifications on the normalizations effect by comparing. CNN models. So please.
And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Sang Ha-sung. I'm uh, majoring in MIS of Dong University. And I'm so late to <laughs> the, the other company, uh, campus. Sorry to that. Uh, I would like to talk about our research. Our research title is Verification of the Normalization Effect by Comparing CNN Models. Uh, the presentation is as follows. First, introduction. Second, related work. Third, methodology. Fourth, experiment. Fifth, result. And final, it goes to the conclusion. Uh, first is introduction. Today, with the development of computing performance, various data are collected and analyzed this uh, in addition, there is the uh, need to analyze the image data in various fields. As a result, interest, interest and necessity of image data analysis are constantly increasing. Because of these needs, various image analysis techniques are introduced. As one of many techniques, image data analyzation using CNN uh, CNN means convolution neural network is widely used. Using CNN technique not only can classify images higher than human recognition, but also can classify a ten of thousand of images in a short period of time. The result of image analysis using CNN can be applied to a variety of fields. Uh, next, and however, it is not applicable to all areas. If you cannot create a model, you may not be able to exhibit the expected performance of the classification model. A lot of research is going on to solve the limitation of mentioned above. And normalization is used as one of the methods to solve this problem. Various normalizers Normalization techniques have been introduced, but research on local, lo local response normalization is still controversial. Therefore, this study presents a classification model using CNN and discuss the application effect of LRN. So the purpose of this study is to verify the application effect of LRN and to suggest the optimal application level by comparing the learning time and improvement to level. And next, we will talk about related works. Until recently, there have been many studies on image classification using CNN. A typical example is AlexNet and VGGNet, which performed well in ImageNet large-scale visual recognition challenges in both studies, however, the claim for LRN is different. Alex suggests that LRN improves network performance, but Simonian suggests that LRN increases learning time but does not improve performance. However, there are insufficient studies to verify the effect of LRN. Therefore, in this study, we try to verify the effect of applying LRN by constructing a architecture based on VGGNet. And gradient vanishing problem is one of the biggest problems when learning using artificial neural network. To solve this problem, LELU and Drabao technique were applied, but the problem could not be solved completely. However, in addition to the above methods, Additional techniques are required, one of which is called normalization. LRN and batch normalization and typical examples. However, since the normalization technique has the uh, disadvantage of increasing the amount of computation, it is important to apply on appropriate level of normalization. And next, the following explanation is methodology. 
the normalization technique used in this study is LRN. The following is the LRN formula. When applying LRN, the most strongly active neuron suppress the same position neurons in different picture maps. That is, when LRN is applied, picture maps can be emphasized to distinguish each picture map better. The following is the same architecture used in this study. I create a model based on VGG network. Two convolutions and one LRN layers were combined into one unit. I go over the detail in the next slide. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the CNN architecture of this study is based on VGGNet. It is modified to fit small and simple images, image data analysis, to reflecting existing architecture. In previous researches, since the study was conducted on large and complex images, the application effect of LRN was insufficient and the computation amount was later increased. Therefore, this study constructed the architecture based on VGGNet and verified the effect of LRN application on simple classification model problem. Uh, next, I will give a detailed description of the architecture configuration. In this study was eight convolution layers and four pooling layers and two fully connected layers to construct the architecture. In, in addition, five dropout layers have been added to improve network performance and the setting have been set to 0 0.05 and 0 0.2. As you mentioned above, Two convolution layer and one local response normalization layer has been set as one unit. We will then study to study the optimal level of LRN based on unit. Uh, next uh, experiment. The first is a description of data set. In this study, MNIST and CIFAR 10 were used basically, and CIFAR 100 was added for more complicated classification problem. MNIST is handwriting image C from 0 to 9 and provides a total of 60,000 images in 28 by 28 size. CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100 is the same thing. Uh, this data set is basic, basic data set, but it consists of small images that fit the, this model and can be used to test the performance of a classification model. And next, I will explain the detailed experiment. Two experiments were conducted in this study. Uh, first, in order to verify the effect of LRN, we compare the classification accuracy between the CNN architecture proposed in the previous study and the CNN architecture using LRN. The pure previous CNN architecture used it were LNet, Alexet, and BGGNet. Second, we compare the five CNN architecture for the, for the optimized LRN application and derive the optimal LRN application level. The following is the experimental result of this study. First, the effect of application of LRN. The following table summarizes the result of comparing the previous architecture and performance to verify the effect of LRN. As you can see in the table, it takes a lot of learning time, but accuracy is higher than other models. Uh, experimental result shows that the performance of LRN-based architecture is improved for all data sets. Particularly, Cypher 100 data sets have more than 2% performance improvement. Therefore, it can be confirmed that the architecture using the LRN is better than 
the previous CNN architecture for the simple image classification model. Uh, the second is the result of application error and coverage level. Uh, the following table compares the performance of each unit for optimal application level of LRM. As you can see from the table, you can see that the learning time increases as the level of LRM application increases. Experimental results shows that there is a difference in accuracy depending on application of LRN. There is also a difference in learning time depending on the depending on the application of LRN. The optimal LRN application level of the architecture used in this study was two units. The lab LRN model took a lot of learning time compared to the non LRN model but recorded high accuracy. Applying more LRN can improve performance, but consume too much learning time. And finally, let me talk about the conclusion. We conducted research on LRN. The purpose of this study is, so, is to verify the effect of applying LRN and the optimal application level as a result of experiment, we confirmed the following effect. Uh, when LRN was apply, applied, the computation burden increased, but the images could be classified more effectively. However, as the application number of LRN increased, the learning time increasing further and the classification performance was degenerated. And this study clearly showed that although the application of normalization, local response normalization improved the performance, it should be conducted step by step in order to achieve the best result with a short, shorter learning time. Uh, by applying stepwise LRN, it is possible to derive the optimal application level and to apply it to generate on improved classification model. Since there is a limit, limitation in the research that we cannot utilize various image sets, it is necessary to expand the length and amount of image data in future study. Uh, and I will finish our announcement. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Thank you for the presentations. Do you have questions? Yes? So, uh, um, so, so I still don't know uh, why is your LRN. So you, you say you, you're using the local response normalization, yes. and here local response is in terms of the spatial local over the go, uh, go through the feature, feature dimension? Yeah, yeah. Feature dimension or uh, spatial uh, dimension? Feature map. Oh. <laughs> Could you I I explain the equation more? About, because the most important p part of this paper is this, is this equation, right? Could yeah, you explain yes. this one more? Uh, uh, sorry. Oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, Local re response normalization is applied uh, picture map, and one picture map neuron is emphasized one uh, picture maps one neuron is emphasized. The other picture map neuron is downsized. So. Uh, Best, best. Mm. So, could you explain the uh, f, the, the term f n minus one? What's that? Sorry, the f n minus one. Uh, n minus one. Yeah, those. Oh, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, this one is uh, uh, depth, depth, uh, 
picture maps or oh, the okay. number of picture maps. Yes, right? yes, yes. So supposed to be yeah, yes. go through the yeah, yeah. feature dimension. Yeah, goes through. Yes. So zero and f n minus one is the, the so f is total number of yeah, feature yes, maps, right? Yes. Okay. So we want to. So in th in this equation, how could you? So what what is your um, beta? Alpha beta is. What is the, your number of beta here? Alpha beta one. is the uh, parameter is the input. Uh, so yeah. uh, like learning rate, uh, like learning rate, input parameter. Okay, so uh, so could you tell, could you share your experience with me that uh, how could you based on this normalization for to solve the uh, gradient gradient vanish problem, you yeah. you mentioned this problem, yeah, right? Yeah. So how could you based on this equation to solve it? Uh, gradient vanishing problem is uh, one of the neural network in problem, but uh, method uh, to solve vanishing gradient problem is example. Lelu or dropout and normalization. Normalization uh, is constructed batch normalization, and this one is same thing, same same work. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you have uh, questions, uh, we can discuss uh, with him uh, during lunch. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, thank you very much uh, for the attendings uh, to the, this uh, uh, section. So, we close and uh, we would like to invite all of you to for the lunch now. Yeah, and we come back at uh, two hours. Yeah. 2 p.m., yes. <laughs>